David Murray Hundley, also known as the Grumpy Entrepreneur, is a seasoned UK-based business leader celebrated for his pivotal roles in innovative enterprises and renowned for his influential book, The Startup Rules, offering over 100 actionable insights for budding entrepreneurs on their journey from ideation to exits. And David Murray Hundley is with us here. How are you today? I'm good. And the, uh, the money's in the post for the introduction so thank oh, you. yes well can you tell us a bit about your background and your experiences in the tech world and how they led you to the creation of the startup rules yeah so i've uh, I, i'm almost 50 years old but i've been in this startup world uh in the tech world ever since my early 20s uh working in startups when they didn't sort of exist and um you know mid-20s uh ipo a company on nasdaq called commerce one for 22 billion dollars uh, during the dot-com boom, uh, bankrupt by the time I was 30 years old. Um, and really in the last kind of 15 years, uh, you know, built my own businesses, uh, made some, made a lot of mistakes um, and also done a lot of good things. And so, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough that I exited from another business last year after six years that I was chairman for. Um, and I've been on all sides, you know, I've been on the investor side, I've been on the board, the board side, I've been the CEO, I've been the chair, you know, I've been the mentor. Um, and the reason the book came around is I get asked the same questions <laughs> a lot. Yeah. And um, and I see a lot of the same mistakes made and bad assumptions. And it's not just the other way I did it, even when I was writing the book, it even reminded me of things that you sometimes um, you sometimes forget uh, a little bit. So that's, that was the real purpose of it. Uh, and giving someone a kind of quick guide, you know, there's a lot of, you just Google, you know, things to do with a startup and there'll be about a million things returned. Uh, and some of it's quite hard to get through, you know, so there's a lot of content. It's not always necessarily correct either, not written by someone who's actually done it. The book covers a wide range of topics. Are there any specific aspects that you think are often overlooked by new entrepreneurs? Yeah, mostly the, uh, the, the kind of the early stage stuff, like the really, you know, you know, the idea stage um people generally overcomplicate things uh they also because there's other it's quite a big population of of sort of startup founders and they all tend to uh pat themselves on the back even when they're making mistakes yeah. so um so yeah it's, it's it's really the early stage stuff and it's also the you know how to raise investment you know raising investment gets thrown around like it's something easy to do um i actually argue it's harder at the idea stage than any other stage even at series c or d um yeah. so and the market out there right now is difficult uh has been for about 12 months so you know raising any capital is a lot harder than it was you've got to do you've got to impress a lot more than you you may have done previously Obviously. So for me, they're, they're kind of the key parts, um, you know, and, and I think if you get those foundation parts correct uh, and challenge yourself and question and reiterate on things, then, you know, you're on a good course to to be able to do the rest of it and get yourself to a hopefully a scale up stage. And is there a specific rule or insight from the book that you've seen? made a significant difference in the success of a startup yeah i mean there's a couple so there's one uh which is right near the start which is around minimal viable product uh people completely overdo that and think they know what all their customers want and then they go and spend all this time and money and on building a product and then they put it out there and everyone's like well actually we just wanted this so yeah. that, that you know that is that whole purpose of that is to you'll never get it correct so it's to you know just start with something and for me really it's the sales side so you know when i invest in businesses probably one of the first questions i ask is have you have you actually sold anything yet yeah. um, it's a kind of a big deal and you know you'd be amazed that <clears throat> how many startups just get stuck in that go into market stage um because they actually can't sell anything at that point so there's no point to the business really um so they're kind of the kind of key ones i would say there is an interactive element in the book so how can readers engage with the book um what do they stand to gain from it yeah so there is a um <laughs> there's the curry words <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the curry words which i don't take you know i can't take credit for it was my friend paul alder from back in the Ariba days um when we wanted to make sure people had read very big documents like statements of work or design documents we used to put curry words in and not tell people and uh you could you could basically see if they've actually bothered to read something <laughs> so, 
it's a bit sneaky um so we kind of we're open on it with with it on the book but it, the the purpose of it is is that if someone's managed to go through and find those um uh, hopefully they've gone through the book and we haven't made it too difficult um and we're i own a business called pario ventures and parios i've had for about 10 years we've got about 150 investments worldwide uh we've had quite a lot of exits and um you know it's to allow people to get access to some help as well so some basic tick sheets and uh we're working on some project stuff around the early stage side and you know it may even be something that i look at as a business from an investment point of view and go okay because it would tell me quite a lot about the founder yeah. uh, they've spent the time doing it and you know i meet lazy founders and i meet not lazy founders <laughs> And how does the curry words that you sneak in work? Is it stuff that makes sense in a sentence? Or do you nope. just chuck in a random <laughs> vindaloo in the middle that people would notice? Yeah, I just literally put it anywhere. So, so it's um, uh, there's there's a hint in the, the title of the book that gives it some of them away slightly. But um, they're nice curries, though, I have to yeah. say. I choose nice curries. But yeah, no, we, um, it, it's a fun thing I've always done. And I've done it, with, and believe it or not, I've done it with board packs uh, when I've been chairman of boards and I've got C to put it into the uh, the director's uh, board pack to see if my directors were reading documents as well. So <laughs> That's such a great idea. I'm going to start doing that if I it's ever really need to write something way, important. Because you'd be amazed. Some people will go, David, did you mean to put chicken masala? <laughs> <laughs> How do you envision your book, The Startup Rules, making a positive impact on the startup system as a whole. Yeah, so we only released the book last week and um, we've already done 5,000 copies of it. So, wow. um, and I've already had emails. Uh, I've had I've had a few emails where people have found the words, so I was impressed, but I've had <laughs> a few people just uh, find me on LinkedIn even uh, and uh, and drop me a note. So that's been nice. And, you know, I do, I am one of these, I get so much junk mail on LinkedIn, but I do actually recognise the ones that aren't junk mail yeah. uh, and do respond even if, if it's a one-liner. Um, so that's that's good. And my view on this, on anything I do, if I can impact one person to do well in their life um, and bring them some success and not have to burn too many calories on it and yeah. look after their family, then I've achieved something. That's pretty much why I do what I do. So, um, you know, if, if, if people enjoy it, I mean, we're working on another one at the moment, which is around uh, knowing when your business in general is in trouble, because there's a lot of that happening at the moment. Um, and we're going to try and do, empower people that are probably in a really horrible position of about to lose it all. So want to be able to help them. And the reason Kevin Doyle and I do it, you know, Kevin was my first boss, believe it or not, at Chase Manhattan in New York. We became best friends. We did the book together. We have a business together. Um, and we've been really fortunate and really lucky to have amazing people around us all working lives. So, um, you know, it's sometimes good to pay back a little bit. Absolutely. And for those who are facing challenges or setbacks with their startup journey, what advice would you give them? I would say to them, it's okay to fail quickly. So I would take a real assessment uh, of what's going on. And it is okay to go, maybe I just can't do it with this business at this particular time. And plenty of us have done it. Like, there seems to be a weird thing in a startup world that failure isn't embraced. And I think, you know, failure should be embraced because it's how you learn. Um, and sometimes... You can have the best idea, best business, and the timing is just incorrect. I've done it myself with a business where I was just too early. Yeah. I think also I would say do not let it affect your mental health. Do not let it affect your family. If it's starting to do that, frankly, it just isn't worth it. Um, and, um, you know, if you've got shareholders, reach out to some of them. Yeah, I think a lot of founders are really bad at communicating with shareholders. And, you know, most people become shareholders because they've made a load of money on exit and they probably invest in the same thing that they built a business on. So the chances are they can offer you tremendous value uh, and help uh, and a shoulder to have, et cetera. So I would very much do that. And, um, you know, also my probably the last thing I would say on that is, um, it does get better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what goes up comes down and goes back up some point. Sometimes just take time to reflect. But, um, you know, the, the signals are usually there. But when your head's in that stuck in that cloud, like anything, it's very hard to see through the cloud, right? So, um, you know, that's why I would recommend, you know, reaching out to, to people. Um, but, yeah, it's never... I've done it myself. I've burnt myself out several times and I've done it myself where it's affected my own mental health and, and life's too short, way too short. 
Well, what else are you working on? Do you have any other upcoming projects or initiatives? Yeah, so there's, so there's two more books. So there's one that I started in 2008, believe it or not. Wow. <laughs> it's been a labour of love, yeah. uh, which was started in New York, which was Will Computers Ever Love, which was about AI. Oh. And ironically, this is the time that you can really dig deep into it. And it talks yeah. about how AI can manipulate uh, relationships, how it can, uh, should it be held accountable legally? It's quite a deep book. Um, and then the other one that we're working on, uh, which we haven't named yet, is around the, the troubled companies, you know, businesses in trouble, et cetera. Um, and then Pario, you know, we're, we're looking to, we've done a lot of investments. And I think we're now looking to working with some of those troubled companies and, and make them good again. And I think we're looking to, you know, do a bit more empowerment of people that they don't actually, you know, need a, a physical person all the time. They can, you know, we can give them some some good ways of, uh, of, of doing processes or, or working on uh, how to make their business better without having to speak to me all the time, for example. So we're working on those. And I'm I'm taking a year off as well, believe it or not, oh. so, uh, I, uh, since July. And uh, so my day involves writing, which is weird for a for a guy that I think got an E for English <laughs> <laughs> at school. Um, so thank God for tech. Um, but yes. um, yeah, so it's, it's a bit of a therapy for me. Um, and so my day involves doing books, racing simulator, uh, for a few hours, walking the dog, running, and taking my children to school. So, um, and trying to do some other bits, but not being as busy as I have been for the last ten years. So, and starting that AI book in two thousand and eight, people might think, "Well, why is it taking you so long?" Because <laughs> I got an E for English. <laughs> yeah, true. But I suppose it's maybe a good thing because if you'd have published it early on, it would be completely out of date now. It would it would be completely out of date. And actually, t- you know, so I did AI at university, and when I did AI at university, people thought AI was Terminator. <laughs> That's basically wow. what they thought it was. And then they thought it was Microsoft Office maybe suggesting your spelling was wrong, right? Oh, yeah. Literally what people thought AI was. And, you know, the the the, the mere mention of it, people were like, oh, get out of here. It's never going to happen. And even yeah. in 2008, when I started the book, and I was looking back at some of my old notes, you know, we still didn't have the capability even then, right? You know, some time ago. So we are really at like, we're still early with AI, but it's definitely become more used and people know the term now. Uh, some people define, define it prop- in, incorrectly, but we are, we are, there is definitely the makings of what, what happens now for the next 20, 30 years or so. So, um, so even the book I do now will be out of date at some point as well, but <laughs> it, it's interesting because I can now discuss the legal implications implementations which back in 2008 no one had a clue what if there was any legal implications so yeah um and you certainly didn't think about manipulation and, and now we're starting to see it so yeah interesting how i did stop not that i knew that but mm. <laughs> i'll take credit that i did <laughs> yeah because you mentioned people thought ai was microsoft word correcting your spelling and ai is such a broad spectrum isn't it people think of chat gpt and other stuff that may be coming for your jobs but it is so many things that include yeah. so much. Yeah, it includes so so many things, and I, you know, it's in a lot of aspects of our lives already. Um, and it's, you know, yes, I hear the argument about taking jobs. Um, it's actually going to create a lot of jobs as well. Um, you know, I think that's not hundred percent clear what that looks like, but it, you know, it will. Um, you know, the governance side of it, 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 it intrigues me. Uh, how we govern this stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, no, it's great, and uh, you know, I'm a very fortunate person. And, you know, I get to enjoy tech as much as I enjoyed it when I was a 10-year-old, so... Yes. Well, in the meantime, the book that you've been talking about today and that's out now is called The Startup Rules. So where are we able to find that book if we want to spot the curry? Yeah, so it's in order. uh, order, You can can get it on Google Books, Amazon, uh, all the usual ones. It's in audio form, e-book, and, and also paperback. Uh, paperback at Amazon. Um, so yeah, you can get it anywhere, and, and the paperback you have to pay for, sadly. But the audio and the ebook is free of charge. Uh, oh wow! I don't, make, I don't need to make money from books. Uh, so um, yeah, it's there, and it's you know, uh, if people download it and want to read it, I hope they enjoy it. And uh, you know, if they any have, have any questions, and you know, they they can find me easily. Yeah. Well, that's brilliant. There's no excuse not to read it if it's free. <laughs> <laughs> well, many thanks for talking to us. It's been great to have you here. Thank you, Toby. I appreciate it.